Today we are looking at a major river system in the Canadian boreal forest. Its basin is not only the largest in Canada, but is also the second largest drainage basin of any North American river, after the Mississippi. Welcome to Earth from Space. The Mackenzie River flows through a vast region of forest and tundra through the Northwest Territories, from the Great Slave Lake to the Beaufort Sea, in the Arctic Ocean. Its delta covers an area of around 12,000 square kilometers, measuring more than 190 kilometers from north to south, and is around 80 kilometers wide along the Arctic shore. The maze of branching and intertwining channels is dotted with numerous lakes and ponds. This wintry image combines three radar acquisitions from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission to show changes in land and water surfaces between three acquisition dates. The 18th of November 2019, 5th of December 2019, and the 10th of January 2020. In the top of the image, parts of the frozen Arctic Ocean can be seen. The different colors are due to the movement and cracking of sea ice between the acquisition dates. The landscape pictured here is very typical for these latitudes, with the whole region subject to a harsh winter climate. Many of the lakes are frozen during the winter months, with the exception of some of the lakes visible in black, which are ice-free. The town of Inuvik lies along the east channel of the Mackenzie River Delta, around 100 kilometers from the Arctic Ocean, and approximately 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The hamlet of Tuktoyaktuk lies on the shores and is the only community in Canada on the Arctic Ocean that is connected to the rest of the country by road. Around 75% of the Mackenzie Basin sits within a permafrost area. Permafrost, which is ground which remains completely frozen for at least two consecutive years, is common in high latitude regions. With increasing temperatures causing permafrost to thaw, it not only releases methane and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but it can cause erosion, flooding, and landslides. Satellite data can be used to help map permafrost, even in remote and inaccessible areas such as the Mackenzie River Delta. ESA-funded researchers have developed and released the longest satellite-derived permafrost record currently available. <laughs> 